long-term solutions are really hard to get, are hard to find. When you find them, they have really long castings and you feel like you're in America's next stock model or something. Welcome back to the Home Abroad podcast with Housing Anywhere. On this episode, we're going to speak to Corey, a 22-year-old barman living and working in Berlin, and Stefania, a 22-year-old student who lived and studied in Berlin. Corey and Stefania are going to share their experience of finding a place to live in Germany. They'll tell us the best places to live in Berlin, what the German rental market is like, the selective process of finding in a roommate, and how to avoid the vicious cycle of the Schufa report. If you're thinking of moving to Germany, be sure to check out Housing Anywhere. Our expat-friendly website is available in English and five other languages and makes finding your new home super easy, no matter where you are. Would you guys like to introduce yourselves? My name is Corrado. Yeah. I'm Italian. I'm 22 and I've been living in Berlin since August 2022. I've lived abroad for the past four years in Amsterdam and Helsinki as well. Stefania? Amazing. I'm basically the female version of Corey. So I'm 22 as well. I'm Italian. I've lived abroad for the past four years and I'm moving to Berlin in October. And in the past, I've lived in Amsterdam and Boston and that's it. Nice. So nice to have you guys again. And today we're going to be talking about your search for accommodation in Germany. You guys, I know, have moved around quite a lot and you've struggled to find rooms in Berlin, in Germany. Why do you think it's so difficult to find accommodation in Germany? Number of people that are looking for a place, for sure. Yeah. The demand is so high. This is big and you can commute and you can do it half an hour travel to get anywhere, but sometimes you just don't want to, or you're trying to always find a place that is comfortable for you. Maybe it's close to your workplace or close to where your friends live and everything. For me, for example, I have lived most of my time in Berlin in the Kreuzberg, Neukölln area, and I'm trying really hard to stay in this area and stay in this neighborhood just because I also know most of the stuff that's here. I'm comfortable around the neighborhood. I know where to go and what to do. And moving to another place would mean either having to travel every day to just get to the things I know and, or having to discover a whole new area. Because I think you live a lot of neighborhood life and you do tend to spend a lot of time in your neighborhood when you move in Berlin just because neighbors are so big they could be cities in themselves. Traveling. 45 minutes to get a coffee at your favorite coffee place is obviously not great. So you're saying yeah. it is quite important to like your neighborhood and get to know people and get to know the area pretty well. Yeah, when you're choosing your house, you're choosing your neighborhood and you have to be really careful with what you decide. Your life basically goes around whatever you're living. And it could be also just our experience. It depends where you're working, as Corey said. It depends where your friends are staying, but also not really, because it happens that many of the hangout spots are just like, again, in the Kreuzberg area or, or in the Neukölln area, because we like them and because that's in our interest. Obviously, there's all their stuff in Schöneberg, but it rarely happens that we go there. Like, we're not the type of people who do brunch. We tried once. We went to Schöneberg. It was very expensive. I mean, we said that's why we stay in Kreuzberg. <laughs> but for example, if you, I remember someone, uh, she was like 28, she was a friend of a friend and she was telling me how she lived in Kreuzberg for a while and now since she's moving to a different stage in her life, she wanted to go to Berlin there because that's where it's more quiet and you can have the type of like family life. Because obviously like we are young people, we're talking about Berlin as if it the craziest place in the world, but you can also have the more chill version and you just go away from these neighborhoods that we just mentioned. I suppose like any city, it's going to have some neighborhoods that are more suitable for families, some neighborhoods that are more suitable for young people. Yeah. So I guess the biggest issue then is that there's so many people looking for places, but there's not enough places for the people. Well, the thing is, I wouldn't say there's not enough places because as is, again, there are a lot of options and you constantly see people posting more and more places being offered. But first of all, rent, there's a lot of sublets, I would say, much more than I've seen in Amsterdam, for example. Everybody's trying to sublet their room in just for one or two months, even one or two weeks when they travel. Mm -hmm. They really just try to get the money out of it in any way possible. 
And there is what I'm doing now. It's actually like more of jumping from place to place, like every month or a couple of weeks, just to always have a place to stay, not have to pay that much. And also it's fun. Kind of. That's my idea of hell. That is my what? idea of hell. <laughs> Moving places it every is. few weeks. Oh my God. You're stronger yeah. than I am. I don't know why I chose to do this now, but I'm doing it. And sometimes I'm like, it will be fun. Sure. God, not for me. Yeah. I can't can imagine that. On the 10th, I'm going to move to just a few hundred meters away from where I'm living now. And then at the end of February, I will move to the house where Stefania used to live and where I used to live. And then I'm going to be there for a month at least. And then I'll see what happens after. It's going to be, you know. If I was moving to Berlin, I would not be able to move every few weeks. Like I, that would kill me. So if you wanted to find mm. more long-term options, are they there for people? Yes and no. I think they are, but it's hard. You do find a long-term option, but there's a waiting bit. You have to wait. It's easier if you're in Germany to find a place because you can go to viewing and you can meet people because there's a lot of scamming, obviously. So if you're in person, it's better. I've heard stories from my previous roommate. She had a long-term option. Unfortunately, she had to change because she had a bad accident with her neighbors. And that was crazy for her because she spent so much time finding this place. And then she had to leave because of, a, of an issue that was caused by another person. And now she had to re-go through the whole process. And eventually she did find one, but it's because she's been in Berlin for a long time. So, you know, she has a network of people that she knows. And the place that she was renting, the new one, she didn't even find it on a new platform. It was something that like, she heard about through word of mouth and she managed to get it because people give recommendations and it's i don't know it's, it sounds very criminal but it's like a, it's a new thing like you have to get recommended by someone else it's similar to that in ireland i was talking to one of my colleagues about this recently if you live in dublin or especially if you're irish you'll always find a way like that you'll always chat to someone or you go through word of mouth and you find something but for expats coming from abroad, it's a nightmare trying to find somewhere when you're not actually in the country. And I do think that I'm going to plug Housing Anywhere for a second, but that is where we come in quite uniquely is that we do our best to facilitate people who are coming from abroad. If you guys were to do it again and you were looking from home, from Italy or from Amsterdam, is there anything that you would do differently? So first of all, I think just looking for houses, the websites where you look for them are mainly in German. So Google Translate will be your best friend. But like there is, again, our website's in English for all countries. A lot of places, especially now, digital age and whatnot, you can get viewings online by the video calls. So you just see the place and have the chance to talk to the person. I've done more than one of them, like actually a few via call, even though they were like maybe even in my same neighborhood, just because sometimes it's easier. I would say it's pretty okay. Sometimes being in Berlin obviously helps, if, especially with long-term solutions, I would say. Because for me, for my experience, long-term solutions are really hard to get, are hard to find. When you find them, they have really long castings. Like they really just get everyone and try to do this like biggie casting. And you feel like you're in America's next stock model or something. You feel like you have to show your best. And try to impress the person you're going to live with. So can you talk me through what Vika casting is? What is that process like? They get you sometimes all together, sometimes one at a time. And like first they do a video call, then they get you for a viewing, then they get you for another viewing, then they take three weeks to decide. And it's just this really long process where they really want to get the best possible person, obviously, to like live in their apartment. And like... Sometimes it feels like it's not really like worth it because you're like, why? Okay, sure, it's your house. I want to live here. Why do you, do I need to like be the best person? Can I just be a little <laughs> annoying? Can I be a human? It, I love that you compared it to America's Next Top Model testing. But that's so funny. Like they're looking for the hottest person. To exactly. <laughs> like who, who is the hottest DJ? Who is the most, who is going to give the biggest contribution to the house? Because at the end of it, everybody's obviously trying to gain something from. I think it's easier to also find a long-term apartment when you're looking for a whole apartment rather than just a room. Because, you know, you can find much more vacant places that 
are available for a few years at least. One of the things that I know is part of the process of looking for a room anywhere in Germany, a lot of landlords will request a Schufa report, a C-H-U-F-A, mm-hmm. and it's a catch-22 situation because you need an address to get the report, but you need the report to get the address. And a lot of people get stuck in that loop. Again, I'm going to plug housing anywhere. Our landlords don't ask for a Schufa report. A lot of them will ask for an alternative proof of income. But have you guys ever been asked for one of those reports? And how do you go about handling that? I have been asked, but I didn't end up taking the house or even going through with the process just because I actually couldn't get a Shufa. I wouldn't even know how. And Shufa, if you're wrong, is also about your criminal record. It's like a screening. Yeah, exactly. Screening, yeah. If you're trying to get a Shufa report, obviously, Corey, you haven't had a really fixed address since you've moved there. So you wouldn't have been able to get one at any point, would you? Yeah, no, I don't think so. If you just need an address, sure. If you need to be registered in a place and have everything sorted, it might be a little harder because, mm. again, sometimes you just cannot if you're just moving around constantly. Yeah. Again, if you rent your house anywhere, our landlords will not ask for a shoe for a port. So you can get an apartment and address. That's amazing. It's not easy in Amsterdam to find a place with a registration, but finding an landlord in Germany is really hard and I guess it's also because it's not that fundamental. Yes, you need it for your Shufa. But aside from that, you don't need for sure a German bank account or you don't need it for, I don't know what else. Like in the Netherlands, I remember in the very first like months, I guess I didn't have it. I was having like a hell of a life because there's so many things that you're cut away from and you feel like you're not actually welcome. And that's why when you read in a in an advert that the Shufa is requested if, as if they were writing no international to leave. So um, it's a bit of a, of a hassle. But I guess like the way I handle it is just, I'm going to send you proof of income from my parents. I'm going to send you like my bank records or, or whatever you need in words of the or Thank you. And Corey, you mentioned that there is loads of sublets in Germany. And then it made me think of, because in Amsterdam, if you live in the Netherlands, you have to register your address to access basically anything. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the sublets don't offer registration because there's someone else's address already or someone else is already registered to that address. Is it similar in Germany that if someone is subletting, you can't register yourself at that address? So the thing is, unlike Amsterdam, that's the two, for example, the two people can live in an apartment rule. Like you can get more registration in a house, obviously, if you pay more taxes and if you go through all the bureaucracy. And sometimes they don't do it. If it's a two or three month stay, Often they just don't want to go through the hassle, especially for short periods. If it's a longer period, it's easier, obviously, to request it and try to also talk to the landlord and convince them to do it. Because at the end, your rent is probably going to pay for all the extra taxes they might have. But sometimes I've even had offers like a one-year contract without registration, which is a little tricky because the one rule that you can only work for three months without registration and then you need to get one. Uh, otherwise, you pay something like 50% taxes, I think. And that's, but I'm actually not sure if you only pay taxes or you're just not allowed to work anymore. So then that kind of leads into my next question pretty well. Can you, is it possible to rent a place in Germany without having a job? I would say yes. Yeah, it's not that hard. Like, obviously, if People are actually like actively trying to find a good roommate that's going to save for quite a bit of time. I think obviously those people are going to ask for you to be a working person, but I don't think I've ever been discriminated against just because I was a student. And obviously there's so many students uh, and the fact that they're subletting and for a short period of time. I would say that actually they probably don't even care that you're not working. And I think that the only way they ensure that you're going to pay and that you're a reliable person is just the deposit, which is usually like, it's crazy. Sometimes it happens that the deposit like double the monthly rent, which doesn't sound that crazy, but if you're staying just for three months, you're basically just paying up front all of your stay. So that's the only way to do it. Housing Anywhere was great for when we were looking from far away because I started looking for places, obviously, from Italy. And they helped me. Like, I actually made some offers and then I forgot about it. And then they called me and, and I was dumb enough to say, sorry, I'll refuse your offer for now because I have this other one. And then they scanned me. So 
That oh, was no. uh, funny. <laughs> I was like, sorry, I have a better option. <laughs> no, it's fine. But eventually they were actually helping me. So um, the other option then is e by client, I guess. And in there, you can find for a pl- you can look for a place, and then usually you do find some people who say like these only working like- people, but it's pretty rare. I don't know if Corey can agree. No, yeah, and I think it's very student friendly as a city as well. A lot of places have a threshold that you have to earn a certain amount of rent. If you don't have that income threshold, if you can't reach that, can you use your parents as a guarantor? Can you use someone as a guarantor? So for long-term places, I think they do ask for this kind of stuff more, obviously. And I would say that in most cases, you can just use a guarantor's yeah, statements and bank transfer and whatnot to secure the house. Yeah, especially I think if you're young and it's, if it's a, a Vegea shared apartment where more people are in that same situation, it's easier. Probably if it's an apartment with all workers, the landlord might not want to get into that. It depends from situation to situation. You actually said earlier on that sometimes you can be asked for three times your monthly rent for the rental deposit. What is that like a standard? What's the typical expectation when it comes to rental deposits in Germany? I think one month. I think it's standard. One month, yeah. One month rent is the expected deposit. Some places literally ask for two or three months, yeah. Especially, I, I think I've seen this a lot when you are actually renting a whole apartment with like two or three rooms. They will ask, even if the total rent is maybe, I don't know, 1500 they will ask for three or 4000 as deposit. Just God, that's a lot of money. And it's like, obviously, you're like, how am I, a 22-year-old, going to afford that? Just give my money out like that, no. You should have been a finance bro. Yeah, I know. <laughs> 22 and earning 50k is the standard now. It's expected. Exactly. Come on, Corey. <laughs> Get on the, with the times. <laughs> What should people be aware of when they're asked to pay their rental deposit? What does, is it difficult to get it back? Is there any terms and conditions that are trickier? Like at home, for example, when you pay your deposit, yeah. like landlords are, they don't really give it back very easily. They'll take tiny bits out for like little chips in the paint and stuff like that. And then they accumulate and you get very little of your deposit back. So what's it like in Germany in your experience? In my experience, honestly, I've never had any problem. Like they, they just give it back because I, I just remember what I was trying to say before. The people who are renting the places again, like they're not evil landlords. They're just normal people because they're mostly who are trying to sublet their apartments or something like that. So they're very chill. And I think what gives them that confidence is also the fact that there is such a high demand that even if I cancel a day before I'm moving in, they're probably going to be like, all right, it's fine. And there's 300 more people in front of my door waiting for you to play. So the same thing goes with, with the deposit. They're really nice, or at least the ones I've had. Obviously, what I do, because I, I don't want to have any problems, every time I get inside a new place, I take pictures of everything. If I see there's like a crack, I take a picture and then I'm like, can you see if this was taken like in, in March? And then you can tell them. But honestly, they've always given me everything back. And I have broken so much things in library's house. And the guy was like, ah, it's fine, no worry. Like, honestly, <laughs> they're nice. That's good. It's also a really good tip to take pictures and stuff beforehand. I always forget to do that. And it's, I always end up breaking something or else something is already broken. Like when I moved in here, there was like a hole in the wall. And I just did nothing about it. And now I'm like, oh, well, it's three years later. I can't turn around now and be like, by the way, that hole was there before I got here. But that's not me. But then there's like multiple other holes that are me, so I can't really give it. But yeah, very good tip to take pictures as soon as you move in, before you move your furniture in. Document any little crack, tear, chip in the wall so that you can prove that it wasn't you at the end of it all. You need to, if you need to. Do you think not speaking German makes it more difficult to find a place to stay in Germany? Usually, we're only talking about Berlin, which is probably the most international city in Germany. Because I can imagine that outside of here, it might be be harder. But sometimes you just don't get replies because maybe they don't actually, they don't speak English. The people that are renting and obviously they want to live with someone that understands them and they can talk to. Or their English is not, they don't think it's good enough to live with someone that doesn't speak German. 
or you just don't get replies. Sometimes, even if, especially on the eBay, I don't know the name. What's it called again, Stefania? My bugger. Yeah, which is like the Craigslist eBay thing. There, if you don't speak German, you might actually have a little bit of a problem because most of the things are in German and it's actually really hard to get a reply in English. Mm. And even if you post yourself an advertisement in English, it's really hard to get replies. Well, I've heard from people that if you post one in German, you get a lot of offers. A lot of people come to you and tell you about their places and give you options. What's the solution to that? Or do you just hope that word of mouth you find somewhere when you're there, obviously? Yeah, you just keep replying in English, using Google Translate to translate everything that the advertisement says, because sometimes they also, like maybe at the end of the this huge paragraph, start your message with this specific word, so I know you've read everything. That obviously, sometimes you just don't read everything, and it's in German, and you're like, I'm just going to copy and paste my little message and try to be done with it. And then obviously, you don't even know that you've lost this opportunity from the start, from the get-go. Okay, interesting. Again, good opportunities. Plug that Housing Anywhere is all in English and the landlords will respond to you even if you only speak English. So making not speaking German, German obviously makes it more difficult. I'd say particularly when you're actually in Berlin and trying to go through like the network there or when you're in Germany. Because if you're using local sources, they probably want local people too. But yeah, not great. But there is also a lot of posting in English and German or some that still reply even if you reply in English like it's not completely undoable it's just harder yeah, yeah. so yeah. probably good to have some words in German before you go over to yeah we actually have again <laughs> got to start lap. this is my last time plugging housing anywhere for this episode but we also have a blog about moving to Germany and renting in Germany and in that blog we've got a lot of like little terms that are handy pertaining specifically to renting in Germany so I can send you guys that maybe it might come in handy Stefania, you don't need it. You're moving back here. But Corey, it might be handy for you when you're trying to find your next place. Thank you, um, actually. That would be great. Yeah, I'll send it to you. Okay, and finally, do you guys have any stories, any funny anecdotes of your house hunting experiences in Berlin? I have seen a lot of advertisements, a lot of places. So, for example, it's not really funny, but like one time I was trying to rent a room that was six fifty a month without a kitchen. Just because, again, people love to get as much money as they can out of an apartment, so they will turn any room into a bedroom. <clears throat> so the kitchen was only in the living room. It was like an open kitchen living room. And uh, the guy that lived there made daddy's room, and the bedroom was still a bedroom. But since he didn't want anyone obviously crossing his room every day to cook and being in his space, he just decided to rent a room without a kitchen still for 6 50 a month, which is a little too much in my opinion that is a lot of money for a place without a kitchen that's crazy i almost did it i actually if my mother hadn't been there to talk me out of it i would have paid 650 i would have been washing all my vegetables and food in a sink in a bathroom <laughs> she's gone she'll be back it's fine. she can join you but also you see obviously berlin is a weird city like people that live here are interesting and not the usual people you can find anywhere else, I would say, just because of the freedom and the spirit that the city has. For example, I've seen multiple, actually, advertisements for nudist households where you are required to be nude in the house at all times because it's a nudist household and they like it like that. And the thing is, sometimes these places are even like cheap and comfortable and like in great locations and everything is great about them, except the fact that you have to be naked all the time. Not your cup of tea. It's not your cup yeah, of tea. Yeah, exactly. I think especially in Berlin, though, because like you said, there's such an artistic free expression culture that people feel so comfortable to just completely be themselves no yeah. right in Berlin. But I would imagine that does also then filter into renting. You're going to end up in some probably quite extreme households yeah exactly again Corey, thank you so much for joining us on this episode coming up next on the home abroad podcast we'll speak to yvonne and jen of simple germany yvonne and jen are going to share everything you need to do when you actually arrive to germany from getting your anmeldung to making new friends if you're moving to germany be sure to follow and give us five stars we've got all the knowledge you need to live your best life in germany